Hi, hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to solve the Wipro programming questions which will be helpful for the Wipro NLTH exam which is going to be held in the month of January. I have already solved Wipro Elite coding questions which was asked on Wipro on campus interview. If you have not watched that video, I have attached the link in description. Please do watch that. In that, I have solved 10 programming questions out of which I have solved 1 to 8 programming questions with solution. 9 and 10, I have given explanation as many have requested me to do those programming questions in English, I am doing this video. So still there are many uh, programming questions left, uh, 5 or 6 questions will be left. So I will first solve those programming questions in English and after that I will solve the remaining 1 to 8 programming questions which are, I have already solved in Tamil in English. So if you are new to this channel and have not subscribed my channel yet, please do subscribe it. Let's get into today's topic. So in this video, I will first solve this programming question 9 and 10 in this video. Remaining questions we will see in the next video. So how the questions will be is write an algorithm to help the shop owner with his product storage so that all products within an ID that is even number can be stored together followed by the products with an ID that is an odd number. So the questions will be like this only but the logic of this questions will be very simple. What the logic is that you have to uh, get an array from uh, as the input and after that you have to print the output as first even numbers followed by the odd numbers. So there are two methods to solve this. So I will explain both the methods. So first uh, they have given the n values. Uh, so get this as the n value and after that they have given an array of integers. So store that it in an array. So first you can traverse this loop and separate the odd and even numbers separately in a separate array like this. So even numbers with even array and odd numbers in odd array. This is first type of method and after that you can print the even array separately, odd numbers separately so that you will give uh, get the desired output. Another method is that you first get the input in this array itself. You first traverse this array. If it is even, uh, so for example, if 10 is coming means print first 10, 98 coming it is also even so print that. If 3 is coming, you don't print that, you leave that. So traverse this array, if even numbers are uh, occurring means you first print that and again traverse the array. So second, again uh, do a for loop and traverse the array. If all numbers are occurring, you print that. Both the answers will be same only. So any methods you can use, I will explain both the methods in program. So first we will see the method 1. So in method 1, we are declaring an header file void main. For getting the inputs, we are declaring int n an array of length uh, 10,000. And for storing even numbers in one array and odd numbers in another array, we are declaring another two arrays, so even and odd. For that even and odd, we are uh, producing this index value e is equal to 0 and o is equal to 0 and loop variable i and j. So these are the variables we are going to use in this program. So first we are going to scan the value of n, that is 8, we are going to scan and store the value in n. And after that we are going to uh, get the input of array of integers so that we are going to declare an for loop. So for i is equal to 0, i is less than n, i plus plus. In that we are going to get the input for the array. So scan of percentage d, I'm pressing a of a. So we have got the input and stored the n value in, so 8 value in n and the array of integers in a of uh, 10,000 in that we have stored. So the logic what we are going to use is that we are going to separate the integers as odd and even separately in even array and odd array. So for that we are going to use another for loop. So for i is equal to 0, i is less than i plus plus. If a of i mod 2 equal to equal to 0 means if that number is divisible by 2 means we are going to store that in an even array. So the index position what we have given initially is e is equal to 0 so that from the first position starting from 0 the even numbers will be declared in that array. So e1 of e is equal to a of i. So a of i if it is divisible by 2 means it will be stored in even array and after that we are going to increment the value of e so that after that the next value of it again divisible by 2 means it will be stored in the next position for example first value will be stored in 0 and after that the second value will be stored in 1 so for that we are giving e++. So this condition is for the even numbers. If it, an odd numbers occurs means in that else part will be executed. So it will be stored in an odd array. So O is the even, uh, O is the odd index for that odd array. So in that we are going to store that array of integers. So O plus plus. So this is the logic. And after that we are going to print those values. Then how the elements are separated in even array and odd array. For example, this will be the zeroth position. So 10 will be the first value. So 10 mod 2 equal to equal to 0, yes condition satisfies. 
So even of zero is equal to ten. So even zero position it will be ten. And after that else part will not be executed. Again four will be incremented. So ninety eight will be coming. So ninety eight will be stored in e. And so e plus plus is there, no? So first position it will be stored in ninety eight. And after that again e plus plus. So second position it will come. After that three is there. So if condition will be failed because three mod two e is not equal to equal to zero. So else part will be executed and it will be stored in an odd array. So three will be stored here. After that, thirty-three is there, so thirty-three is stored in odd array. Twelve is there, so twelve will be stored in even array. Twenty-two is there, twenty-two will be stored in even array. Twenty-one and next eleven are there, it will be stored in an odd array. So the odd array and even array, the numbers are getting splitted accordingly. After that, we are going to print according to the desired output. What they have said is that even number followed by this odd numbers. So first we are going to traverse this even array. So for i is equal to zero, i is less than e. Why we are giving this e means initially we have given e is equal to zero, and after that e will be incremented. Ah, uh, how many number of uh, even numbers are there in that array means that many times it will be incremented. So how many even numbers are there? One, two, three, four. So e value will be four. So i is equal to zero, i is less than four. I is less than four means till three it will be printed. So zero, one, two, three. So Till three index position, it will be printed. So we are giving that e. So i plus plus print the percentage d even of i. So even array will be printed first, and after that followed by this odd array. So the output of the program will be so ten, ninety eight, and twelve, twenty two, and after that followed by this odd array. So three, thirty three, twenty one, and eleven. So this is the output for this program. So now we will solve by method two. Method two will be much easier than method one. So for getting the input, the same steps are followed. In the declaration, we will reduce that array, even array part and odd array part, because in this we are going to print directly the uh, even numbers and odd numbers by traversing it by two loops. So in t n a of thousand i j. So we are getting the input eight in n and the array of integers in array a. What we are going to do is that we are going to traverse the array two times. So the first time we are going to print that even integers uh, from that loop, and from the next loop we are going to print those odd integers. So for that, what we are going to do is that for i is equal to zero, i is less than an i plus plus. If a of i mod two equal to equal to zero. So if it is an even numbers means here itself we are going to print those even numbers value. So if we traverse this loop means what are the even numbers in this array? It will be first printed. And after that, again we are going to print those odd integers. So for that, another loop we are going to declare. So for i is equal to zero, i is less than an i plus plus. If a of i mod two not equal to zero, so this is for even condition. This is for odd condition. So first we have initially printed those even integers, and after that we are going to print those odd integers for that this condition. So both the methods will produce the same result. So the next program is same as the first program, but the change is we have to first print the prime integers. After that, we have to print that non-prime integers. That is the composite numbers. So what we are going to do is that. So this is the input. So input is seven. They have given seven integers. The output should be first prime numbers followed by non-prime numbers. So what we are going to do is that we are going to declare a function called prime, so that we can call that function and check whether the given number is prime or not. For that, we are declaring this uh, prime uh, function here. So what we are going to do is that hash include studio dot h header file. Int prime int a. We are going to pass the input from the main function to here. So we are assigning it as a. So prime is the name of the function. So in this we are going to write the logic of the prime number. So int flag is equal to zero, comma i loop variable. For i is equal to two, i is less than or equal to a by two i plus plus. This is the condition for the prime number. If a mod i equal to equal to zero, if this number is divisible by any of those numbers between these digits. So it is a non-prime number. So we are making flag is equal to one, and we are doing break. So it comes out of the loop. If flag equal to equal to zero, if flag equal to equal to zero means the condition is that it is the prime number. If flag equal to one means we are going to return one. So it is non-prime number. So we will see the main function. So after this function, we have to get the input. Same what we got in the previous program. That is int n comma. Uh, array we have to declare scan of n and again we have to declare one for loop. In that for loop we are going to scan the array integers value. So that we are going to declare here. And after that what we are going to do is that for i is equal to zero, i is less than in i plus plus. If prime of a of i, the first digit that is two, two will be passed here. It will check two is prime number or not. Two is prime number, so it will return zero. If prime number means we are going to return zero. 
So 0 is equal to 0. Yes, the condition satisfies. So it is going to print the value of 2. So 2 is printed here. After that, again, i will be incremented. So 1. So 9 it checks. So 9 prime of 9. So 9 will be passed here. 9 is not a prime number. So it is returning 1. So 1 is equal to equal to 0. No condition does not satisfy. So it i again incremented. So it goes to 5. So 9 is not printed. So first the prime integers will be printed like this and after that no non prime integers will be printed like this so for the same for loop the condition is prime a of i is equal to equal to 1 if it is equal to equal to 1 means it is non prime integers it is equal to equal to 0 means it is prime integers as we have given the condition uh, written statement like this so written 0 means prime integer written 1 means non prime integers so if you write this program and execute your output will be first the prime numbers followed by the non prime numbers so I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please share it with your friends. I will solve the remaining programs in the upcoming videos. To see those videos, please subscribe to my channel. Until then, stay tuned. Signing off from you. Bye. Take care.